Hello, welcome to our special live streaming series, COVID-19 Frontline on CGTN. I'm Zhou Yun. COVID-19 Frontline is a platform which usually provides a platform for medical experts from around the world to share their thoughts and experiences on fighting and containing COVID-19. But today, the focus of our topic will be a little bit different, which I will explain very shortly. And apart from the uh, discussions among our guests, we also take questions from our followers on various social platforms, including CGTN app, the official website, CGTN official account on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Sina Weibo. So feel free to leave your comments and questions on those platforms with the hashtag of my opinion on COVID-19. We we'll look forward to hearing from you. And today we have young people, a full house of young people joining us from China, the United States, uh, UK, uh, you know, many European countries, and also, uh, also one from Thailand, but now stays in uh, UK. So hopefully, you know, they can share with us many of their thoughts because they are young, they are promising, and also they are very energetic. But just as many of us who have faced so many uncertainties and challenges uh, amid this pandemic, so hopefully we can get idea from those young people about how this experience have shaped their thoughts, you know, changed their plans, and maybe even transform their futures. And now, without further ado, let's just get started. And usually, what we do, you know, is me introduce to you our guests. But today, I want to do something a little bit special, which is to have our uh, very, very handsome, beautiful guests introducing to you all of them. So let's just get started. Let's start with the ladies, lady first. Let's start with Ava. So Ava, please. Hi, my name is Ava, and I'll be a senior going into high school this year. Uh, I moved last year from Ohio to Wisconsin, mm -hmm. and now I live in a smaller town, pretty suburban, a little ways out from Milwaukee. Uh, I'll be in the process of applying to colleges this winter, so it's definitely going to be a little different. Okay, thank you so much, Ava. Sheng Yue. Hi, I'm Sheng Yue from Shanghai, China. Recently graduated from Concil School, a high school in the U.S., and um, plan to attend Bates College in Maine this fall. So I'm an online columnist and project planner. I'm so glad to be here to share my perspectives. Okay, thank you. And Hamina, please. Hi, my name is Jimena Carvalho. I'm 17 years old. I live now in France in the city of Lyon. Uh, I'm in school. I'm studying management, and I'm an incoming um, high school senior, like next year. Okay, thank you. And uh, Chen Yue, please. This is my former colleague, actually. It's the only one familiar face that I know in this uh, guest house. Yes, Chen Yue, please. Hi. Hi, everybody. I graduated from Yale Jackson Institute for Global Affairs in May, and I'm currently working on the history research project at Yale. Mm -hmm. Wow, amazing. Thank you. Let's go to the two gentlemen here, Chip. Hi, my name is Nakapon or Chip. I'm a first year PhD student in education at the University of Glasgow in Scotland. And I examine the notion of intercultural competency in Thai to English interpreters. And I've been in Glasgow for almost a year now. And on the other hand, back in Thailand, where I'm originally from, I'm also a faculty member of the Faculty of Liberal Arts, Thammasat University in Bangkok. Mm -hmm. I taught there for five years before coming here. So I am actually on study, study leave at the moment. Wow, cool. So uh, let, finally, let's go to uh, Alex. Hello, my name is Alex. Um, I've just well, almost finished um, graduating from law school, doing a law conversion course um, Yeah, from London. Mm -hmm. And sort of looking in, to get into the field of law at the moment and find out a challenge as a result of the pandemic. Um, yeah, that's me. Wow, that's cool. From 26 school. years of age. As well. <laughs> yeah, and you, you will probably become a lawyer, Sorry? right? Yeah, yeah, that's the plan. Fingers crossed. Oh, nice. Yes, fingers crossed. And also, you might be the most talkative and eloquent person in our uh, array of guests today because, you know, you're professionally trained to argue with people and also to make a living from it. So, guys, be careful, right? <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, so let's just get started. Let's start with uh, our uh, high school students here because they may have, you know, the, this uh, pandemic may brought so many challenges to all of us, but for them it might be extra tougher because they need to apply for uh, universities very soon. So how about let's start with Ava. Ava, I know you're going to st uh, start to uh, apply for colleges just later this year. We're starting from uh, early next year. Uh, so will this uh, process be tougher for you due to the COVID-19 pandemic? You know, I think some things have become easier, such oh. as the mm -hmm. test scoring, like ACT and SAT. A lot of them are optional now. Yeah. So a lot of schools are kind of focusing more on what a student has done and especially their recommendations or just their essays and how well they portray themselves. Mm -hmm. So I think that for some people is going to be a major advantage, but also just for the selection process in general, considering you can't go to a school and look at it and kind of feel the atmosphere and ask questions, it's a lot harder to determine what schools you want to go to or what you're kind of interested in. Mm -hmm. So that's been a major kind of road yeah. bump this year. And also a lot of schools are kind of dropping a lot of things like extracurriculars and even just going on campus is very iffy right now. Mm -hmm. So that's definitely something we all have to think about when we're applying because we maybe don't aren't getting what we'd normally be able to pay for. Right. What about you, uh, Hamina? Are you experiencing similar either good or bad things uh, what, about what uh, Ava have just said? Yeah, well, um, I agree with her, but mm -hmm. I think, I mean, I, I'm not planning to go to college, so I can't really, I don't know how, how it works, but um, my plan was to uh, work and study program. So it's two years and you spend half the time uh, studying and half the time at work. So you pay it and, and everything. And I think with COVID-19, it's gonna be really harder to find, um, to find a job because because of the safety rules and and everything mm -hmm. and yeah, but i agree with her oh uh, yeah thank you so much uh hamina so alex hamina just said it might be harder to find a job for her right what about you because i know you just graduated uh from law school is it really hard for you to become a lawyer maybe you, you need to start as a paralegal right so how is the job market doing uh we're treating you Sorry, you need to unmute yourself before you talk. Thank you. Okay, what's, uh, apologies. Sorry. Yeah, so I've actually, um, I'm actually like at the moment, so I was illegal during my, my studies part, um, which, I, which I've been doing. Um, I have this sort of, um, sort of the training track um, that I read from different law firms, city firms, and that's um yeah that's a lot of them or a lot of them that i've applied for have been pushed till next year which um which is quite frustrating because a lot of the applications were filling out march mm -hmm. march and may or no no not even may february, january and february and only just now they've said they um yeah gonna withdraw any applicant um for the coming for the coming year it's a bit frustrating right um but yeah, in terms of in terms of looking for yeah, I've, I've, yeah, in all in, I find it very difficult trying to find work. Um, yeah, at the moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's usually challenges where sudden you know changes like this could bring a big impact to the job market. Because I remember when I was uh, back in 2016 when I studied at University of Cambridge, and at that time you know there was the sudden decision of Brexit. So it's like overnight, so many jobs just got vanished, so many job opportunities, right? So yeah, it was I believe it's a hard time, but it's not only hard for people to find a job for you know the graduate. It's even hard for some people to come back home, right? Shengyu, I heard for you, you know. Luckily enough, you got admitted by uh, a dozen of universities, but it was quite an arduous journey, I would say, or bumpy journey for you to go back to China from the States. So just tell us a little mm. bit more on that. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. That's so true. So I left the U.S. in May and returned to China. So we know the travel restrictions and the ticket plan, like the plane tickets, is so hard to find online.、Mm-hmm. So I went through my last two months of high school online, and then I came home. So、um, the day, so I I back from Connecticut to LaGuardia Airport in New York on May the twelfth, and the next morning I took a flight to Seoul.、Uh, Because of the virus prevention and the control of the airport, I slept on the chair in the airport、oh, wow. waiting room for one night, and then I flew to Tokyo and then transferred to Fuzhou, where I was quarantined for fourteen days plus four times of COVID nineteen testing. So wow, <laughs>、yeah. so、that's it's, it's so, a pretty bumpy. It is、journey. really really hard. So what that was like? What five connecting flights, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, about、uh, four, five. Actually, yeah. Oh, four!、Mm-hmm. Wow. So,、yeah. Chen Yue, is that the reason you know this kind of arduous journey that made you stay in the states? How are you enjoying? Yeah, or how、right. are you feeling right now? Now I'm talking to Chen、uh, Chen Yue. Yes. Oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry, you have similar names. I'm. I have to pronounce it really, really perfectly. Yes, Chen Yue. Is that the f- flies thing that you know keeps you in the states? Well, you think it's safer just to stay where you are, just like、uh, why so many people are doing now. Yeah, I think my previous correspondent experience kind of prepared me well for <laughs> this kind of unexpected situation. You have、so、to tell them first because you use. I have to tell you, Chen Yue used to report on the war zone, right? So, to to her that she has suffered or experienced so many, so much more things that are much more dangerous, much more shocking than this, right? So maybe the pandemic was not a big thing to you, I assume. Yeah, it's also very challenging, and but I think I made the decision in March、mm-hmm. when the cases increasing rapidly in the U.S.、Uh, I think it's kind of on still under my control to maintain my own safety and health, and also because I've been following the news and the reports,、uh, what happened in China since late January.、Mm-hmm. So. I've been having enough knowledge about this COVID nineteen. I know how to do the pre- cautious、uh, procedures correctly to maintain safe. So、right. I never really hesitated over the choice of going home.、Mm-hmm. I made the decision to join this、uh, history research project in winter. So yeah. It's good, you know. You have something to do at home, and also, I, I, I guess you also have more time to spend with your cats, right? So maybe your cat is really happy that you can spend more time with with him or her. I don't know, right? Yes. Cool. So what about Chip? Because now Chen Yue said she has this project going on, you know, helping a professor to write a book. What about your、uh, the project now you are conducting in、uh, Glasgow?、Uh, has it been affected by any way by this pandemic? Yeah, well, first of all, doing a PhD in the UK is it's vastly different from doing it in the US. Right. Because you're treated as, you know, an independent researcher right from from the get go.、Mm-hmm. And fortunately, I had finished all the required coursework and training courses before COVID nineteen arrived in Scotland. That was like before March. Mm-hmm. So I was set to, you know, sit down, research, and, and write a thesis, which could be done physically anywhere. But the drawback is that I had to rely on、um, solely on online journals, articles, and, and websites since the library was closed for for about four months.、Um, the other impact that I I had. Was on my data collection plan, and my、mm-hmm. initial plan was to travel back to Thailand for、uh, interviewing people. And of course, the plan has been disrupted by COVID nineteen, so everything has been suspended. So I'm moving everything online. Yeah.、Uh, had I not taken that option, COVID would have taken at least half a year, I think.、Um, and the other important thing is about using the workspace at the uni. Mm-hmm. You know, being able to share your thoughts, what's going on, and your progress with your peers, I can be inspired that way. And sometimes I can inspire other people as well. But now you're just sitting at home at your desk by yourself. So just sitting there by yourself, are you enjoying it, or you really hate it? 
Uh, it depends. You know, <laughs> you, you you can concentrate on your work more, but but four months is not easy. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, you just have to pace yourself. You know, it's it's mm-hmm. you're trying to balance work and life. But but once work and life become one, you know, at home, it's the same place, the same apartment. Things get more and more difficult each day. Yeah, right. psychologically as well. I think. Right. So what I would Ava, because just uh, as Chip mentioned, you have more time to stay at home or spend with your family, with your with yourself. So how are you dealing with it? How do you, or maybe even you know, dealing with your parents? Do you have more like a honeymoon period of time, or you know, started to fight more? So what was like? Yeah, luckily I have a pretty close family, so I was kind of used to having. A good amount of family time. Yeah. So there has been a noticeable increase, which、uh-huh. for me is a little difficult, especially getting a little older and trying to be more independent. Especially,、mm-hmm. I just turned eighteen,、um, so I'm a little older for a senior. But turning eighteen, you get a lot. You're supposed to have a lot more responsibility and independence, and especially with COVID, it's made it a lot harder to kind of be able to just go out and do those sorts of things.、Mm-hmm. Uh, but I mean, I've relied on them a lot and. I have a sister as well, and so you know you really have to kind of band together, so because you, you can't just isolate yourself, right? Because you can't really go out to people.、Mm-hmm. So、uh, I, I personally rely on my family a lot, though we have had some fights because there has been a lot more contact, and we've probably known or gotten to know each other a lot more than we initially planned for my senior year.、Mm-hmm. Oh, Chen, uh, well, sorry,、uh, Shengyue. So because I think. You know, spending time or more time with yourself sometimes could be a challenge because you have to show this high degree of、uh, self-discipline. You have to know how to use your time or manage your time in a really efficient manner. Is it hard for you? Because it seems you need to、uh, conquer multi-task at the same time, applying for university, going back to China, and many more. So, how is it going to you? Yeah. So for me, I realized the importance of、uh, self-regulations, even in extreme conditions like COVID nineteen. Like I have to go back to China, and I had to have a good attitude to deal with those fears, arrange my plans, and doing great time management. So with the pandemic brought out in the U.S., I left school and rented housing with Chinese friends. So at the same time, I had to I had to face the process and the result of my applying for colleges, which is really hard hard for me. But I feel like yes, to be positive to the future and facing all those uncertainties would be a good method for us.、Mm-hmm. What about you,、uh, Chen Yue? So what do you usually do at home? Doing research for the professor, fit your cat. What else? Something different than before? Uh, I think it's a good opportunity to really immerse in the books,、mm-hmm. and but I think it's also important to keep a healthy routine. So after it broke out in mid March、uh, in the East Coast, so I usually take a walk in the morning or in the evening when basically there's no people around. You, d-、so、you don't do that before, doing- right? So you, see, you kind of this laid back person. You don't do that before. You don't like to do exercise before. But it is during the pandemic <laughs> they start to exercise more, right? You even take a walk. That's unbelievable. Like from what I know of you, right?、Uh-huh. I find it when you're stuck in the、uh, apartment for a long time, your、yeah. uh, brain and your intellectual activities are not active as I expected. Extent, I can't feel like I become more. Mm-hmm. Dull myself, so I think I need more、uh, stimulation from the outside <laughs> world. So just、yeah. go outside to see how the season change. And I remember <laughs> when I go out, there's only some campus guards around, and we shout at each other across the streets to exchange some greetings. <laughs> yeah, that's all the conversation we can have in March.、Mm-hmm. But gradually,、uh, I'll. I think another thing changed in my schedule is, so when we're back in the campus,、uh, you're tempted to make new friends、uh, whenever you meet a new interesting people. There are so many amazing people around. Right.、But、during the COVID nineteen, it's not possible. And、uh, what 
change that you have the chance to have a deeper and more in-depth relations with the friends you've known before. Mm-hmm. So we chat in the WeChat group on a daily basis, and when the COVID nineteen is better under control, we resume our weekly meetings and to have dinner together and yeah. to share what happened in the life and change our thoughts. I think it's really important to have the in person meeting and communications to stay sane. <laughs> Yeah, to stay safe and also stay connected. I think, especially during a big crisis like the pandemic, we need each other more than ever. What about Alex? Because you know, I know you have classmates, and for usually classmate、uh, people who major in law, you like to talk with each other, debate with each other, you sometimes even argue with each other. But you know, during during this pandemic, you might not even get the chance to see your classmates, professors that often. How do you socialize with your、uh, with your peers? Um, yeah, I found it less of an issue with my classmates. Did、uh, to be honest, I actually found it beneficial for my studies. Yeah, was because I felt there was a less some moments aside from、um, classmates、um, that I, I would normally socialize with.、Um, they were obviously not doing a whole lot either. So、mm-hmm. I felt like it was a it was good for me to sort of be able to knuckle down and get my head in some books. Um, so I thought that that part of it was quite beneficial. The bit that I really struggled with felt that my teachers, I couldn't really communicate, or they weren't very good in terms of responding to to me、mm-hmm. when I wanted to communicate or ask questions about things I was learning.、Uh, that that side of it, yeah, I really,、um, yeah, I really sort of struggled with, and I think was very beneficial to my class.、Um, but yeah, on a kind of selfish level, it was quite. It was quite good to have that time where I was strictly focused on revision. It wasn't any of those external pressure dragged me away from from my plans. Mm-hmm. Well, actually, one of the things that is、uh, happening during the pandemic is many things have been、uh, gone online, right? You know, shopping has been on,、uh, going online, going to e-commerce, and also you know, schools and classes have been、uh, going online as well. That's why you need to take so many e-learning, e-courses, right? So, how do you like it? Is like easier for you, or you think you know it takes a time for you to to adjust to it? How about you? You're、uh, sorry, no less. Yeah, why are you well, you don't like、That's、it,、me? Alex? Yeah, you don't. Like it? Nah, I really, really like it. Are you?、Um, re- I like, I like the opportunity. I feel like then, okay, I can sympathise with the teachers in that I understand that it's probably a, quite a lot harder to sort of、um, uh-huh. sort of control a classroom when everyone's trying to sort of yeah get get their words in online.、I、understand that, but I do feel, yeah feel like it's more like you're narrated.、Um, you have a lot of input, a lot less tailored to the sort of Um, yeah, to the sort of individual classes, and it's never just sort of generic. At least this was my experience. So it was very much right.、Uh, didn't really.、Um, I didn't really feel like my university、um, navigated that part of it、um, really well. I would take criticism. Of it. Mm-hmm. What about you,、uh, Hamina? Because I know you major in、uh, management studies, right? So maybe for law or for some majors, it's easy to、uh, conduct the courses online. What about for you? How has、um, how have been adapting to this、uh, increasing amount of time spending on e-learning and e-courses? Well, to be honest, it was really really hard because, I mean, when I'm at home, I don't focus as if I was in class, and.、Mm-hmm. I don't know, like the temptation of not going, and I don't know. I mean, it was really hard for me, but I know it's the safest way to keep following class, and I know some people like it, but to be honest, it was really, really complicated for me because I think it's not the same. I don't know how to explain it, but it's really, really different. It, yeah. What about Chip? Do you have an advice for、uh, Chip? Hamina, who doesn't、uh, seem to like the online courses、uh, a lot, because I know you used to be a tutor, so you must have tons of experience of dealing with students, you know, about trying to solve their problems. So now, if you switch back to being a teacher and a tutor, what suggestions would you give to、uh, Hamina? Well, I think on the bright side, you know, not having to travel to campus has allowed me, as a student,、mm-hmm. to enjoy a, a wider. Range of online seminars and webinars more conveniently at, from home, you know.、Uh, 
and usually attending session these sessions you know i i would normally not be able to attend like like especially conferences i think like online conferences yeah it, it just makes it easier and i think glasgow university did quite seamlessly um the change was was swift and unprecedented mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um but but i do agree with her i think you know although it's convenient um, I just think the experience and the level of engagement are not the same. Many times you'd find, you know, the speaker speaking to himself and, or asking questions, and all you hear is, is the awkward silence. You know, right? And it's just difficult, uh, difficult for for students to concentrate. Yeah. Yeah, and and especially for those uh, students who major in some something like performing arts or you know theater or art, it's really hard to to get the meanings across just by you know learning online right so it's i think it's really understandable for some students to find it really difficult to uh adjust to the uh a, a big amount of time spent on e-learning so now let's uh, turn to ava so ava what is your plan uh for applying for a university and has the pandemic changed your options in any way yeah uh the plan as of now if kind of things improve a little bit. We were planning on trying to at least look at some areas mm -hmm. in terms of where I'm looking. I don't think I'll be able to necessarily go in and visit them, but I definitely want to try to at least get some sort of feel for where I'm looking. Right. That's probably just, like I said, that's probably been the biggest change in uh, what I've kind of been planning to do. Mm -hmm. And especially with how much everything is online, that has affected where I'm kind of looking to go because if a school hasn't adapted well and COVID continues, right? It, it's really a put off to kind of see you, pay, see you pay for so much and then not be able to receive it, partly because of the pandemic, but partly because the school isn't able to kind of receive that issue and deal with it properly. Mm -hmm. So, Sheng uh, Yue, because you, unlike Ava, you have you're one year older than her. Maybe at least you're you know your greatest one uh, one one year earlier than her. So you have uh, been gone through this process of applying for university. So if there's one thing or two things that you think are the most important takeaway from your um, applying for universities, uh, you can give to Ava and also Hamina. What would that be? You think they're most helpful to them in a way? Yeah, I mean, everyone who knows about college applications know that it's never an easy process. And I believe it's even harder for the class of 2021 because they're facing more uncertainties. So my uh, advices are, so first of all, to enlarge the numbers of college you're applying for, like to search for different areas, not only focus on a small part. So I apply for schools in like California, New York, even in Canada, but I finally decided to stay in how Maine because it's how like many quite schools, stable. How state. many schools have you uh, applied in total? I've applied 18 plus colleges. I, I don't remember the exact number, but yeah, I applied to a lot. Actually, our college counseling in my high school just required me to apply for 12 colleges, but I think it's not enough for me because of <laughs> yeah. the pandemic. And right. yeah, and also because we don't have chance to visit the school. Mm -hmm. So you have to do more research like to connect with um, admission officers to ask them questions to know how the school look like, how they deal with the COVID-19, how their uh, learning method going to be, how they face those situations. So that's the two big advices that I can provide and I believe those are helpful. Hamina, do you think it's helpful, those suggestions just being given by uh, mm -hmm. Sheng Yue, do you think it's helpful to you? Yeah, yes, it will be. Thank oh, you very much. <laughs> that's cool. So, so Shenya, I think you applied for much more than 12 schools because you were admitted by at least 12 schools. That what I, that's what I heard, right? Yeah, yeah. Over a dozen of colleges. Right. But out of those universities, you chose the one in Bay, uh, in, in Mayan, which is a little bit surprising to me. And also, is your choice of school Man. being influenced by this pandemic at all? Of course. Because um, so I apply for those schools. So honestly, it's more difficult for me to choose a 
school because all of those schools they are separate into different parts and even some of them provide me extra scholarship because of the COVID-19. But I decided to stay in Maine after a very, very difficult and long-term ideological struggle because first, this is a place I am familiar with. Mm -hmm. At least I have a lot of friends, my teachers here. Secondly, Maine is a relatively stable state in the speaking of the pandemic. So that's the reason why I chose Base College, stay in Maine. Right. What about you, uh, Chen Yue? Because you know, just Sheng Yue just said this pandemic has made 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 him think, you know, in different perspectives about about which school to choose. So does it influence you in any way about your decision for your future after you graduate from uh, from Yale as a master? Are you going to apply for a PhD, or maybe I don't know? Do you have any other new plans that you haven't told me yet? All right, so I think when we graduate, the, our plan is that I think for most of the international students, mm -hmm. we are thinking about maybe we can try the opportunities here in the United States. Uh, that's what we've, we've been trained. Mm -hmm. uh, so in the U.S., you have three months of OPT. Right. It means like after you graduate, you have to find a job mm -hmm. uh, in 90 days. Otherwise, you're staying here in illegally. But most of my cohorts this year, uh, international students, not only in my school, but other majors. If, so it's been three months already after the graduation ceremony. Most of them has to go back because of they cannot find a job in 90 days. Right. Uh, I think the COVID-19 really impact the U.S. job market. So I'm lucky to have a uh, offer to do a research assessment yeah. job, right. uh, but that has been decided long ago before this COVID. Mm -hmm. Actually, after the March, most of the uh, RA jobs or uh, postgraduate jobs in the academia in the U.S. has been suspended uh, due to the funding problems. I think another. Uh, way it changed my future plan is that I have thought about going back to the Middle East after I graduate. I think mm -hmm. that's what where I'm really good at. I know much better. But thinking about the public health situations in yeah. those countries, I think that's not an option right now. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. so, so you uh, you have more concerns. Right. So maybe it didn't change your option of being an RA at Yale, but it did, uh, you know, give some limitation to some of the other options that you may have if we don't have this pandemic. Right. What about you, yeah. Alex? I know you're now trying very hard to become a lawyer, um, of, course, of course, start as a paralegal. Uh, but do you have any before this? Do you have any backup choices for yourself or about your about the friends or your classmates around you? What have been the changes that you all have observed that brought by this pandemic? Um, well, in terms of what it hasn't really, it hasn't really changed. It hasn't really ch changed. I guess it's broadened um, the sort of jobs that I'm looking for. Um, so mm -hmm. I was quite. I've, I've had to broaden the search. But, um, whether it's really legal specific at the moment or whether I, if I look at other opportunities as well um, as the pandemic's going on. Mm -hmm. um, so I've had to, yeah, I guess in that respect, it's, it's changed my plans to extent. Um, yeah, I guess because I'm living, you know, living away from home, so rent obviously becoming quite an issue. This is sort of what jobs are in the market at the moment I'm, I'm looking to apply for. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, as a, yeah, other than that, what about the help Not from uh, help and other services from your university? Have they provide any services uh, or help? They think that they're really helpful in in helping you to 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 be more competitive in this job market. For me, for me. Yes, Alex. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, no. To be honest, my university hasn't been good at that at all. They did have a career service um, when we were able to attend the university. Um, but it was I understand the amount of students went to the school, um, and that sort of just become even worse with it having to. I, I think they are still doing it, but they're um, mm -hmm. yeah, the it was 
have to wait for years in order to get an appointment to speak to someone for 10 minutes and it's really right yeah it's not really um sort of leading to him much from experience mm -hmm. uh what about you chick because i noticed uh before you were actually a lecturer in college uh focusing on linguistic right is that what you focused before? How about now? What is your project about? And some of the uh, some of my friends who are now studying or pursuing PhD overseas, they're a little bit worried or concerned about the future funding, about uh, some of the changes, visa policies, or maybe international students' policy that might get changed because of this pandemic. Is that something that you face um, as well, like a similar situation? Oh, I'm sure this is a much more difficult question to mm -hmm. answer for those who haven't landed a job. Right. And uh, for me, like I said, I'm actually on study leave, so I am on hiatus. Um, eventually, I'll have a job waiting for me. Um, and I think COVID-19 is it's just unprecedented. The other event I could recall when I was quite young is the 1997 Asian economic crisis, which, of course, Cripple Thailand, uh, Indonesia, and Korea, but I was really too young to feel the impact. And then again, in, in the past decade, Thailand has had its own like, political turmoil, which still we still need to untangle. Mm -hmm. uh, but nothing could compare uh, with with COVID. I think I know that a lot of my friends uh, who are uh, back home with flight attendants are the first ones to go. Right. I'm just glad I'm uh, you know I'm doing a PhD right now. Um, not working at the moment and I think we were all caught up guard by COVID. Uh, I am not exactly uh, affected by it because my, my funding has been for has been granted for four years. Wow, so, you're lucky, um, right? Um, yeah, uh, this is I think for graduates this is indeed a difficult time and I just hope we recover from this as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. So what about you, Sheng Yue, because now there are also some international students, uh, some people for, uh, as you, like college, uh, you know, high school graduate who are going to college, they're a little bit worried about whether they are able to get into, you know, the, uh, the country where the university admitted them. What about you, like in September when the semester starts, where are you going to be? Are you going to be here in China doing this remotely or are you going back to the United States? What will be the situation like now? There's no one to take the remote learning courses in China, uh, at least before 2021. So as far as I know, my college will choose hyper mode, like most uh, universities in the U.S. mixed up with in-person teaching and remote learning. So students who are uh, unable to come to campus, especially for me, like international student, will be mm -hmm. allowed to stay in our countries or regions for online courses due to their travel restrictions. And to deal with the time different efficiency, so my school adopts a two plus two mode. That is, a semester is divided into two modules. Oh. Each module have two courses, and mm -hmm. the first module will end in mid-October. Okay, that's cool. That's actually give you some, this two plus two model could, can give you some options and also the possibility to stay at yeah. home without traveling or, you know, uh, suffering this difficulty of traveling around. Maybe you, you don't have to take another four or five connecting flights back to, to, to uh, the States at the moment, that's right? That's true. Okay, yeah. that's good for you. <laughs> what about uh, Hamina? So starting in September, are you going back to school or are you going to continue this online session, which you don't like very much? So has, have you gotten any news mm -hmm. from the school yet? Well, yeah, I think school will be on site, but we will have to wear masks and respecting all the, um, all the safety, safety rules. Uh, but we're not sure yet. We will see. I think if, if uh, in France uh, we have a lot of outbreaks, well, maybe school will be online again. But I don't know. They said it's going to be on site, so mm -hmm. we will see. Cool. So what about you, Ava? So do you, did you get any news from the school? What about in September? Will the school, be, uh, will the school reopen? Or you need, still need to wait and see? So I think everything hasn't been necessarily completely planned out, but the plan is to kind of have two different models. One, people have the option to go onto the campus for school and to go to school. Mm -hmm. And then the other is to take online. So I don't know the particulars yet about 
whether they're going to have Zoom at the same time as in-person classes or whether it's going to be kind of pre-recorded. But I definitely know that there's going to be kind of this double choice that you can choose from. Yeah. Uh, I also know that you have to wear masks. And so you're going to be trying to take precautions and do more outdoor classrooms mm -hmm. if you do choose to go in person. Uh, the only other thing is I think sports are also starting and they've only been pushed back a month, which is a little unique, at least for Wisconsin. Right. So uh, I'll definitely be curious to see whether that changes. Mm hmm. That's cool. And what's your plan, uh, current plan for, for universities? Just like uh, Sheng Yue said, he applied for like a, a, a large amount of universities just in case, right? What about you? What is your plan? How many schools do you plan to apply and what kind of major do you really in, uh, are you really interested in? So I was already kind of planning to apply for a large amount of schools just to see kind of what I can, where I can go, what I can get for scholarship and that sort of idea. Uh -huh. I was actually planning to maybe go international as well. Um, like China? With COVID, of course, that... No. <laughs> maybe China or, oh, wow, um, cool. or the UK or, or Japan or really anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, I was definitely curious about that. Traveling is something I'm definitely looking forward to because as right. of now, I haven't really decided a major. There's kind mm -hmm. of a lot of options open, but I think I want to maybe minor in East Asian studies or languages. And so... Of course, that was something I was planning on doing. So when I'm looking at schools, that's definitely a major component is whether uh, that's kind of involved. And so I'm kind of hoping COVID can quickly uh, yeah. get settled, partly, uh, partly for everyone else. I mean, I hope everyone can get back to what they're doing, but also so schools can have those exchange programs to have open mm -hmm. back up, not only for me, but just so everyone can kind of be able to get those cultural experiences. Right. That's, that's something that I think we all look forward to. What about you, Alex? Have you been staying in the UK since the pandemic? Will you actually get a chance to, to work around or to go around? Uh, yeah, yeah I've, been, I've been staying in the UK. I did have a, I had a um, was going to go to Italy. That right. got cancelled, unfortunately. But the job that um, you look so yeah, for, look, or the job that you... I missed the last you, bit of your question there, actually. Did you ask me something else? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, but yeah, you can continue. You can continue with uh, what you just say. It wasn't very, it wasn't very interesting, I was going to say. Oh, okay. So also about the jobs that, uh, you know, you were uh, applying. So all of them were in UK? Yeah, yeah, all of the jobs in the UK, yeah, yeah. Mm hmm Okay, that's cool. So now I, I think yeah. I would like to give uh, a few opportunities to our guests today to ask each other a question, to ask something that they're really curious about, that were they really interested in. How about let's start with Chen Yue, because you were a reporter. So you, just like me, can ask some really harsh and difficult questions, right? So can you, yeah, you can ask anyone a question that you really want to know. Go ahead. Uh I have a basic a general questions for everyone. Right. So I want to, I'm curious how people around you or yourself are coping with the anxiety and pressure. Uh, are your institutions uh, providing enough assistance like the counseling to students to help them to cope with these difficult situations? Can I yeah, answer? Some of my friends yeah, can really I answer have that? Time. Right. I, I think I can be the first one to answer that. Because, you know, I, I just like you said, I think we're so many other people, we suffered a little bit of pressure, you know, mental pressure at the beginning. What I did is like I ate a lot at the beginning. That's why I gained a few pounds. But then I think I, after I realized maybe this is not a good solution, so I started to jog more and to exercise more. At the beginning, or at that time, actually, these gyms in Beijing are all closed. So I just do some keep or some, you know, heat or some exercises at home. So, you know, I have this kind of, you know, dilemma of first of all gaining weight and then trying really hard to, to lose weight. But that's not a, maybe not a good example from me. What about other people who can answer this question from Chen Yue? Something better than me, of course. Uh, Chip? Um, as a student, and yeah, sure. Uh -huh. um, we're being offered a lot of, with a lot of, you know, webinars and classes. And also, um, Glasgow is offering this midweek coffee chat you know so you get to talk to your colleagues um, 
informally. Um, it's been a very difficult ride, I have to say. Um, but I think one positive change for I think for most international students is that you get to talk to your family more, you know, more often than you would, would normally do. And COVID nineteen, I know this is going to sound weird, but has in a way brought us closer, like virtually. Yeah. Right. And the other important thing is is the life perspective. So I think you you just find joy in little things in life, like you know, going out for a walk or or like I I actually I remember I look forward to going to a grocery store. You know, <laughs> I think people will actually right. appreciate life more when all this is over. Yeah. Exactly. Something that seems so trivial or normal before has become suddenly become like a you know luxurious thing to do during the pandemic. So、uh, Shengyu, I saw you keep nodding when、uh, Chip said you know the importance of family.、Uh, so why you really agree with him on that? Front, right? Yeah, I, I I strongly agree with the family things because、uh, so because I can't go to the U.S. for、uh, the next semester, so I need to stay in China, stay with my family. So I will have my first birthday with my family since I went to high school in the U.S., which is so great for me. That's the pressure、um, opportunity that I've had, and also I want to make some more points. Uh, on the top of that, I feel like because we have more leisure time to have like、uh, remote learning, and、mm-hmm. in that spare time, I believe we need to have more great sense of time management to set up a great timetable to see like meet new friends online and read great books and doing something we really love but we don't have time we didn't have time in the past. I believe those are something to keep us positive to yeah face those uncertainties. And I guess you, judging from the backdrop of、uh, this bookshelf, you also read a lot, right? Yeah, I do. <laughs> and I, I don't know whether you notice that it's you and also Chen Yue who are the only two、uh, using the the bookshelf as、uh, as the backdrop. Maybe you two can really, you know, just killing by killing the time,、uh, kill the time by reading a lot, right? You're enjoying this time of、uh, more time with yourself, right? Yeah, yeah, we do. Oh, that's cool. How about、uh, Hamina? Do you、uh, do you enjoy this time of spending more time with your family, or did you get any、uh, help or services from the school about you know helping you and your classmates to release this uh, mental st- uh, stress uh, during this special period of time? No, actually, I enjoy. I kind of enjoyed it because, I mean, the first two weeks,、mm-hmm. I thought it was gonna be really really hard, but. It wasn't really.、Um, I tried to follow a healthy routine, like、right. working out, not not eating a lot because, yeah, it can go really fast.、Mm-hmm. But、um, in school, didn't didn't do anything. To be honest, they didn't. Right, that's they, good. Yeah, that's、mm, good. But I yeah, I watch a lot of series.、Uh, I I spend a lot of time with my mother during the lockdown.、Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I, yeah, I don't, I don't remember what I did, but yeah, basic. Your mom, basic your mom will be really, really sad when you say, "Oh, I spent so many time with mo- with my mom, but I don't remember much." <laughs> yeah, she's gonna <laughs> really. <laughs> no, no、uh, because it was yeah, I was spending time with my mom. I was watching series, was getting、yeah. rest, and working、mm-hmm. out a little bit, and that's all. Yeah, that's cool. But you, you, you actually think this family time, increasing amount of time spending with your family members, is helping you, right, to to survive this、yeah. uh, this hard time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah. Ava, because I I think you or Hamina might be the youngest guest for today's dialogue. So I want to give you an opportunity to ask a question because now some of the guests here, I think they're studying in a u- university, might be your dream school, right? Yale or、uh, Glasgow or other s- universities. So, do you have any question to anyone here?、Uh, anything that you want to know, or you want them to help you address? Sure. So, I guess it's more of a general question. I'm kind of curious about how the people around you are kind of dealing with COVID, or how seriously they're taking it. Because、mm-hmm. I know there's a large disparity between a lot of people, and I know universities will come out with statements about what they're kind of doing. But you don't really get the feel for what the actual students are doing or how safe it really is. So I'm、right. curious about that. 
Yeah, I think I can start that. I think here in China, it's like people take it extremely seriously. Maybe that's what you heard as well, because you know we are among the first country to explore this uh, COVID-19 virus. So and the government really, really paid very close attention to it, and it's like people are also paying very serious attitude to it. So it's like everyone you see walk on the street, they wear masks voluntarily. It's like everyone you see, and also the pay, uh, you know, the doctors, the uh, medical facilities just uh, were allocated in place within a very short period of time. So it's like we're using all out efforts to address those issues. Uh, but I think uh, in many other countries, in the United States, or in uh, UK, uh, or maybe the situation is a little bit different because I remember when I texted Chen Yue, right, about three months ago, I was like, uh, you have to wear a mask. By the time the U.S., the people, or many people in the U.S., they still don't think it's a big issue to wear a mask, right? So has yeah, the situation... Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, what about Alex? How's the situation in U.K.? Or, yeah. I think that everyone... I think everyone's got a little bit bored of um, sort of sticking to. It. I think there's been lots of messages from, um, from the government, so people have, at the beginning weren't really sure what they were able and weren't able to do. And um, yeah, I think every it's become quite tiring for people. So um, I think that yeah, people are sort of going about daily lives much the same as they were before. Mm -hmm. Apart from the only real notice difference that I can see is going on like, the transports on the, either the, the, the train, the nearest come through to wear a mask, right. and going into shops, um, likewise. But other than that, I think that everyone's sort of yeah, really eager to get back to normal life and sort of yeah, taking quite a relaxed approach to mm -hmm. things, which isn't obviously a very good, good approach to take, I don't think. What about Hamina? What about the situation in France? Well, in France at the beginning, nobody really thought it was uh, a big deal. Even politicians said that um, it wasn't useful to wear a mask at the beginning, like in March, mm -hmm. or yeah, in March. And then now you, you have to wear a mask every, everywhere you go, in shops, in the subway, uh, not in the streets, but we'll see. And yeah, it's really, the people respect it. At the beginning, no, but now uh, because they, if you don't wear it in the subway, for example, for example, sorry, uh, you you face a um, hundred and thirty-five euros um, uh, penalty. I don't know how to say it, but yeah, it's really it's mm -hmm. really um, taken seriously. Right, it's really no. serious. Yep. So uh, finally, I, w I would like to give the uh, opportunity to uh, Sheng Yue. Because now you're going to face a major transition of your life because you're going to college pretty soon. Do you have any questions for the big brothers and sisters here? So, or, yeah, so uh, how... It seems you don't have the, any, the, right? So my question... You have your problem yeah, solved. but... <laughs> <laughs> if you don't, we can I, go to I, other I people, right? I didn't prepare for any uh -huh. big questions, but I still like want to learn from those great big brothers and sisters about how they're facing their um, school works, how, how their experience look like, and any advices for me, especially if they can imagine during the pandemic. Right, so I think we have three people. I'm younger than you, no, that's, that's not true, but we have three people, uh, mm -hmm. three guests joining us who are older than you, I guess, it's Alex uh, Chip. Uh, Chen Yue, so let's just uh, start with Alex maybe to give uh, not only Sheng Yue but also Ava and uh, Himika and some other uh, young people, young students who are going to enter college pretty soon or who are applying you know, uh, for universities pretty soon, some of the suggestions that you think might help them to better adapt to this uh, changing period of time. So Alex? Um, what was the question? So is how, how, to, how to adapt in this for new people to universities, right, right. how they can adapt to the situation. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I think I, I, I can't really say enough other than saying it's going to be very difficult, <laughs> really. I mean, it's going to be a massive, it's going to be a massive change from my first year of university was like, right. and that was sort of a question that I prepared to younger people about the sort of social aspects of university and how much that will be impacted because I'm I, I could just imagine it's going to be really difficult, like, in, yeah, just sort of simplify. It's not a very positive tone to take from a friend 
but yeah, I can just sympathize with you guys about having to go through it. Mm-hmm. Cool. So, Chip, you seem com- you look confident. You're already getting the answer in your heart, right? Yes. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, sorry about I that. Think <laughs> it's a difficult time. It's just, just like Alex, you know. Um, but uh, on one hand, I think that the UK universities are struggling to intake students okay, for 2020 and 2021, mm-hmm. and especially for those people who want the full UK experience. Okay. And coming to the UK, it's not about getting that degree. It's also about you know immersing yourself with the, the language and the culture as well. And that's why people are willing to pay a fortune for for the experience, right? Especially right. after Brexit in, in EU for EU students as well. Um, and I think the question is, are we going to get the same uh, experience or a comparable experience? Uh, so it's it's. Of course, it's a difficult time, and but but there are actually services that are making the process easier. For instance, if you are if you're not a native speaker of, Eng- of English, then for instance, if you're taking the TOEFL, you can do it at home now, mm-hmm. like the at home edition. Uh, um, I'm not sure if, if the the IOS is doing it, but that's one thing that's helping us in a way. Um, right. Well, um, SOUS, just make sure that your SOP is, is succinct and you know is, is concise, is, and you you explain why you'd like to uh, be enrolled in the program. Yeah, I think that's it. Okay, I can tell from uh, thank you so much, Chip. I can tell from Chen Yue from your face that you're really putting lots of thoughts in this question because it looked like a hard one for you, right? So how how does it go? Do you have anything for uh, those young students? I've been working for a few years before I came to back to campus. So I really had a hard time to adjusting to it at the beginning. Right. So my first suggestion, and especially during the COVID e-learning uh, period, I think, uh, I think first you have to really make good use of the, uh, your instructors. Uh, so my experience that before uh, the office hours usually limited to hours per week because most of the professors don't really live on the campus, so they commute to the campus once in a week. And you have limited time to communicate with them directly. Uh, actually, after COVID-19, since it's done remotely, they have more flexibility in their schedule and locations. So you can actually take more initiatives to uh, ask for more time from your professor or get more attention for yourself. And I think it's really helpful to really discuss clearly with your instructor what's the aim of that course. Probably all of them are labeled as global history, mm-hmm. but with different courses, they actually have different aims to train different perspectives to your academic abilities in that course. So the more you discuss with your instructor, the better you know where they want to train you. Mm -hmm. I think you have uh, better outcomes. Secondly, I think uh, the methodology really matters. So I uh, advise the students to maybe you're taking a history course. Uh, I think it takes probably an hour or two to browse on the internet. What mm-hmm. are the history professors are teaching you? How to do history writing for, uh, for this discipline? And what this course is about? How you deal with the sources? Like Because each discipline, they have their own methodologies. Right. It's not the same. So if you get on board in the correct way at the very beginning, you kind of save a lot of time for yourself. Mm-hmm. I think that will put you like have some upper hand from right. the others. Right. And I think also in the COVID-19, you really have to be more proactive, uh, try to reach out to your cohorts, to the professors, because anyway, you won't bump into each other naturally mm-hmm. on the campus. So mm-hmm. you have to email them first. Right. Even mm-hmm. they don't reply you, keep doing that. <laughs> yeah, keep bothering them, right? <laughs> 
Yeah, thank you so much. So before we wrap up, I'm just wondering, anyone else has anything to say or has any question to ask? So if not, we're just, just going to wrap up today's discussion. And I think, you know, the, this pandemic is tough for everyone. It may be especially tough for those young students, young people, because it brings so many uncertainties to their lives. They, they need to apply for colleges. Maybe they need to study. They're now studying abroad and they're also looking for a job or even, you know, just make some basic life planning. But now there are so many challenges and also uncertainties going to those, um, you know, which used to be same very normal process. But I think what is lucky is that I think the guests, at least joining us today, um, they not only share with us their problems, but they share with us their solutions. They not only share with us their desperations, but they also share with us their um, hope and also optimism. And I think this is really important because under this new norm, uh, post COVID-19, people are thinking or wondering about how to live a new life. And I think it is opportunities and uh, like this, like the, the dialogue that we had today, can really make us uh, clear about our future by talking to our international counterparts. And also, uh, one of the best ways is also to communicate with each other to bet more, to be more open-minded, and also to get different takeaways from the people who uh, can really provide helpful suggestions. So I would like to thank you all of you uh, for your time and also for your very, very valuable uh, inputs and suggestions. And also a big thank you to our followers for your attention. We'll have more to come next week. Thank you and goodbye.